I have in front of me the well-known UK Cypriot, Professor Gibros Nicolaidis. Good morning, Gibros, and congratulations on behalf of Barigiaki and the Cypriot community on receiving being one of the highest honours in the fields and, of health and medicine. What does it mean to you personally and to your profession? Thank you very much, Michael, and it's a great pleasure to be able to communicate with the Cypriot community. Um, I feel very proud to be a Cypriot, and um, in many respects, I consider it a reward for my efforts in, in, in medicine, but also the ethos that I acquired from being a Cypriot in terms of my devotion to uh, looking after pregnant women uh, and working over a number of decades for the benefit of pregnant women and their, and, and their babies. Um, it is a great award um, because only 10 doctors have been selected by the American Academy of Medicine. I haven't got anything very much to do with the American Academy. So for them to have selected me uh, amongst all fields of medicine, it is a recognition of, of the work that I have carried out with my co-workers over a number of, uh, of decades. So it's a great honor. In Gipros, you are the head of one of the biggest fetal medicine research centers in the world. What work does the center undertake? Michael, we, we, we do a lot of things. Um, in many respects, many of the developments in our field of fetal medicine, uh, pregnant women and looking after their babies have been developed in, in our research center over uh, from the 1980s onwards. Um, we have developed methods of examining uh, pregnant women with ultrasound to diagnose fetal abnormalities from as early as the beginning of the pregnancy. Uh, the most important breakthrough uh, relates to nuchal translucency, this collection of fluid behind the baby's neck, which is uh, used throughout the world in screening to identify pregnancies with chromosomal abnormalities and abnormalities of the heart and many other major abnormalities. Um, and a, a lot of work on fetal surgery, uh, undertaking intrauterine procedures to correct certain fetal abnormalities uh, using laser uh, through a telescope uh, to separate identical twins that are bleeding into each other. Uh, and the prediction now and prevention of the two most important complications of pregnancy, which are premature birth and preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is a high blood pressure of pregnancy, which is responsible for many, many women dying throughout the world and many, many babies, of course, uh, dying and suffering long-term handicap from this. So it's diagnosis of fetal abnormalities, prediction and prevention of important fetal and maternal complications of pregnancy and fetal uh, surgery. During the um, coronavirus pandemic and your recent health issues, how's the centre and yourself been coping? Yes, I have uh, uh, last, last October, I was diagnosed with this uh, condition called multiple myeloma, which is a form of uh, blood uh, cancer. Uh, in the, I was receiving chemotherapy in the beginning of the year and I continued to work because I felt quite well. Uh, unfortunately, however, from uh, April uh, with the lockdown, I had to be isolating because with the chemotherapy, my immune system was being damaged and I could not uh, resist any major infections. So if I got COVID, I would have died. So I had to stay at home. So I worked from home in terms of analyzing data, writing scientific papers, and on a daily basis, uh, my coworkers were sending me videos and they were asking for my opinion about how to manage pregnancies. I even carried out fetal surgical interventions uh, using a mobile uh, and, 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 and through the FaceTime, I was directing my team on how to perform the, uh, the surgery. So from my point of view, I managed to continue to work through a very difficult period from home though. Uh, I miss being with the patients a lot, uh, but I will, I'm very proud that I have, I have a very good team of doctors that were able to continue to work in my, in my absence. In July, I went through a difficult period because I had a marrow transplantation 
and that made me feel quite unwell for a, a few weeks, but now I feel very well. But what does the future hold for Professor Gibrots Nikolai in the Santa Fe Tool Center now? My, my, my dream is to continue to, to work. I, I intend to carry on working until I die. There is no such concept in my mind as uh, uh, retirement. I have uh, invested all my life in terms of uh, working in this uh, clinical and research center at King's. Through my work uh, and, and, and the charitable organization that I set up, uh, we have donated 45 million pounds towards building a beautiful research center and also giving a lot of scholarships to many hundreds of doctors from all over the world. Uh, my life will continue. I believe in continuing to do research, uh, have more uh, breakthroughs, uh, reduce maternal and perinatal death and handicap, uh, and train as many doctors in the world as possible to continue and promote this work so that it is accessible not only to uh, the most advanced Western countries, but also very importantly, for the developing countries. I have helped set up centers in places like Zimbabwe and uh, Rwanda. Uh, and I have trained, as I said, hundreds of doctors from many, many different countries. So that needs to continue. So Kipros Yukolaidis, hopefully, for as long as he's alive, he will be able to continue to work. Well, thank you for talking to us as Barigiagi newspaper. And as a Cypriot community, we are very proud of your achievements. And I'm sure you're motivating most of the UK Cypriots and Cypriots all over the world to follow in your footsteps, maybe not in the medical field, but in other fields, there's room for them to achieve things in their life. And um, we wish you continued success, Gibros. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. And I give all my love to the Parigiagi and the community. Thank you very much, Gibros. Thank you.